Good afternoon once more. Thanks for this warm uh, reception and thanks for the introduction and the invitation. Um, very happy to be here and I think it's a really good thing of you that you saw this presentation right now where gold isn't actually being discussed a lot, which uh, I think is unusual and it's great that you guys are interested in gold right now, not when everybody else is interested in gold. So uh, I think we had a lot of good content and I would like to add to that and I hope I can provide you with a few thoughts. So. I don't have that much time, so I'm really going to speed up and I want to really only bring two or three points to you um, and I hope uh, you, you will take away something from that. So just a few words on, on myself, Mark Wallach, my name. Um, I'm from Austria. Um, I really like the Austrian School of Economics. I didn't discover that in our great uh, university system, unfortunately. I had to study this by myself and I'm um, really a, a, a fan of, of, of Hayek, Mises and so on. I think um, everybody should have a look in these kind of uh, books if one is interested in economics. Probably most of you know of them anyway. Um, I always uh, have to say that by now because it came, became some kind of a routine. Uh, uh, because of my Austrian accent, uh, they, they called somebody on YouTube, started commenting, calling me the Arnold Schwarzenegger of, of economics. <laughs> so I, 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 I rather embrace it instead of hating it. So, okay, I go with that. Perhaps even better, Arnold Schwarzenegger of Austrian economics. Uh, that would be my, my, my perfect uh, match. Um, what we are looking at is gold and crypto. Um, in Incrementum, uh, I started writing about gold 2013 together with my dear partner, Ronnie Stöfferle, who's been doing that even longer since 2006. And we publish an annual report, which is quite a brick by now. And um, it's available. It's available on ingoldretrust.report. It's coming out 27th of May, next one. I think there will be a lot of interesting stuff in there. Um, by now, it's, it's quite a big team. It's uh, 15 people working on that uh, project base. So uh, some of them fixed, some of them especially only from f for this project. And it's, it has a huge following and we're quite proud of what it actually has become. So we're really motivated to, to, to bring out an even better report every year. Um, also, since uh, one and a half years, we are writing about the crypto space. I got interested via my, my interest for gold, first of all in, in, in Bitcoin, but I mean crypto is fascinating, it's a broad, broad space, there's so many facets, we, we could talk for hours and hours, but just to let you know, also a quarterly a publication is available on crypto research report, it's like the small sister report of the gold report, and uh, it's mainly edited by the Melsa Hayes, which uh, is employed by us, and she's an American, very smart uh, girl uh, from, from the US, and she's doing her PhD on crypto uh, in Liechtenstein, so a lot of things going on. Just, we want to just give a very short, out, uh, short shout out to our partners, because without these partners, we wouldn't be able to make the re report, and we wouldn't be able to um, provide it for free. So a special thanks to, to them. We'd like to thank them on like conferences like these. And yeah. So let's let's dig into to the content. So has anybody got an idea who may have said this a uh, quote? Gentlemen, in applied mathematics, you must describe your unit. Einstein. Einstein? Not even that bad, but <laughs> not quite earlier than Einstein. Heisenberg. Heisenberg, even earlier, I think. <laughs> Other physics fans here in the room? Newton. Newton, I heard it over here, yeah. It was Isaac Newton. <laughs> Isaac Newton was a mathematician, but he also was, not that many people know, he was uh, the master of the Royal Mint and basically the godfather of the gold standard. And I find this quite interesting because he, he actually uh, approached the, the topic from a more uh, mathematical or physical standpoint, meaning um, you need to define your unit if you measure something. You need to define uh, a meter, has to be a meter, and uh, whatever uh, you want to measure needs to have a fixed unit. And basically, this sums it already up for what the case for gold. 
gold is a fixed unit. Why do I say that? So I just want to really go over this briefly. Dimi mentioned it uh, among other things. Uh, he had a, a whole lot of very good points, I think. I'm sorry, nobody. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, try to stay here. Um, so the concept is, wh why, what does it mean? Why is gold a good unit? Um, so what we are looking uh, at here is the annual growth of gold between and during l roughly the last 100 years. And the annual growth of gold is very constant. So uh, it's pretty much 1.5%. It, it uh, varies from time to time. It's a little bit lower than that, a little bit higher than that, but very low uh, variance in this number. So that means gold isn't actually that valuable because it's so scarce. Yes, of course it is scarce, you can't print it and so on, but gold has been mined for, for thousands of years and, and it's hoarded. So every year the same amount more or less comes to this amount and you as a gold holder, holder can be very sure that you won't be diluted by a lot of new gold uh, supply which, which is coming to the market. So the very interesting property and the most interesting property of gold is, is its constants, its, its constant quantity. So the 180,000 tons Dimi mentioned which is uh, the, the, the estimation of the, the global above uh, Earth gold supply. This is, uh, this is only growing very slowly by two, three thousand tons a year, which is 1.5%. So it makes a very good unit to describe, to define your measurements, to measure things in it, because it, 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 it's, it's not completely constant, but it's the most constant physically thing Above, or, uh, above ground. I mean, there are a lot of other arguments for gold as well, but I think this one is, is often overlooked and that's why I wanted to take the time to point that one out. So this is also actually uh, called this concept stock to flow. How, how many people of you know stock to flow ratios? <laughs> okay, um, so that's really easy, it's just basically the inverse of the inflation rate of, of, of gold or any commodity. So gold has approximately 70, so that's like 1 divided through 70 is 1.5%. So it grows um, with 1.5% each, each, each year. Silver is much lower, uh, was higher initially, but it, it became lower. Um, the, it still has therefore some monetary properties, but, but not as good as, as gold, because as you know, silver is also used for industrial uh, measures. And all the other basically commodities have a very, very low stock to flow ratio. They are consumed. So basically everything which is produced is kind of burnt or digested if it comes to wheat or to agricultural stuff. So, so, so you only uh, produce commodities to consume it, except for gold and silver. These are used to hoard it. It's, it's a strange concept, but I think it's a fundamental concept to, to which one has to understand to really fu fully comprehend precious metals. So where am I going with this? There's another thing coming up here and it's Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's stock to flow ratio or Bitcoin's inflation rate is not quite constant, but it be it's becoming more and more constant. It started out pretty, pretty uh, low stock to ra flow ratio, so high inflation rate. So these are the numbers uh, between uh, 2012, <coughs> 2016. This is where we are right now, almost. In 2020, because of the algorithm how Bitcoin was set up, the inflation rate goes down every four years. It's called halving. So the, the, the units which are produced go down every four years. So that's why um, uh, over time the stock to flow ratio gets higher and higher until Bitcoin at one day will reach 21 million units. No more inflation, this, this stock to flow ratio will be infinite. infinite. Mm -hmm. 
actually, actually uh, so, so there's zero, zero inflation on, on Bitcoin. Does it mean it's better than gold? I wouldn't say that, but it's just conceptually uh, even harder than gold. That's the idea behind Bitcoin, to have a zero inflationary monetary unit, uh, which, which should be a quite good store of value, similarly like, like gold. In this respect, yes, one could argue it's, it's actually better, but it has other uh, properties where it's just different. So I really don't, like this comparison so much, which one is better? Both have advantages, both have disadvantages, but just conceptually, this is important to get. This is basically the same, just uh, in a different uh, graphic. So we are almost uh, as break, breaking through the stock to flow ratio from, from gold now. Okay, so when it comes to Investment, um, like I'm, I'm fund manager, I, I, I look at correlations, I look at distributions, and I look at this kind of stuff, and how to combine different asset uh, classes, that's, that's I think an interesting thing to think about. And we have uh, put on here the distribution of, of gold, the returns of gold, and also of Bitcoin. And most of the financial assets have um, some kind of symmetrical distribution. So like st stocks, so you, you, I'm, I'm sure most of you know the, the, the normal distribution. This is too easy, this is, uh, this is probably not the right, right way to describe reality, but at least this, the, the distributions are more or less symmetrically, at least with stocks they are. Um, with bonds most of the time they are, if you don't have a default. So if you have a default, it suddenly your, your return distribution gets skewed to the, to the, to the left very uh, abruptly because uh, and one day if they default suddenly you don't get, get the interest. So uh, it's a huge uh, tail which one has on, on the dis return distribution. And Bitcoin is, uh, is skewed to the right. So this is a, a, an asset which has a high optionality. It can Potentially, it has the potential to double, to triple. It showed that it has this potential. And it, in my view, and when I discovered Bitcoin relatively early, uh, I figured this out uh, for me too, that it would have to be like that. Because I thought there are a lot of risks why Bitcoin sh sh should perhaps not be able to, to deliver the promise to be a good store of value because the technology could advance, for instance, or there could become something, uh, they, they could hack it, they could attack it, and so on and so forth. Uh, I still think that these risks are here, but nevertheless, if, if it really uh, comes up with this promise and is useful as a store of value, then the valuation is so low that it has to be skewed to, to the right the returns, because then it has to rise uh, within the multiple. So. Taking this kind of um, worldview and trying to put it into some kind of a portfolio concept, that was basically my, my personal challenge. And when I started uh, also investing into Bitcoin, it was for me relatively easy because I thought, okay, the good thing is I don't have to bet a huge amount on, on this stuff because as it, the return potential is so high, I just need a small position of my portfolio and uh, I have to be willi willing and able to lose all of it because it's super risky. But uh, if, if it goes up, the small position will, ha will have a nice impact and, and that's good for me. I, stupid fool, because hadn't I think the thought like that, I would have put a big position in there and that would have been better from an absolute point of view. But uh, looking back from portfolio management point of view, I, I did everything <laughs> correctly. Um, but so I was able to invest a little bit earlier, which was good. But sooner or later, the question appeared: when to sell? How, how, how do you how do you manage this this whole exposure? Um, I'm going to come to that point in one second. So I just want to point out a few other differences, so that the the, the return distribution is different, the volatility is extremely different, obviously. 
So Bitcoin is, is uh, factor X, volatile, 10X, volat more volatile roughly than, than gold. Um, and this is the interesting point. The correlation is very low. So even though the concept of Bitcoin is, is similar to gold, the founders of, of Bitcoin clearly uh, new Austrian economics, clearly new monetary history, and and um, made the algorithm in, in in a kind of way which is able, which should help to compete with with gold. But nevertheless, for now, for the time being, it, the prices don't don't correlate at all. Bitcoin rises, gold falls, vice versa, or is no correlation. And this is a rolling correlation has been pretty pretty stable, and that from a portfolio manager's angle is a very interesting uh, property because if you have zero correlation you can you can reduce your overall risk if you combine these two things so that's good to know so what what do what do we do with this information we also looked at the drawdowns of Bitcoin. So going back to the, the volatility, the volatility is often used as a risk measure, as the risk measure. I think it's probably not the ultimate risk measure. A more interesting risk measure is the maximum drawdown. What does it mean? That means how much would you have uh, lost if you like would have invested at the worst possible time, like in, in the bull market where you think, oh great, I'm gonna invest, December 2007. And here we are, March 2019, gonna log into my account, what's, what's the value left? Uh, mini, minus 80%, minus 90%. So this happened recently, we are, I think, more than minus 80% now, roughly, from the, from the top, and it happened three times before that as well. So you can, Bitcoin and all the other cryptos, clearly high, high risk asset. So that, that's, also to, to obviously to, uh, to take into account too. But on the other hand, we have gold. Gold, which has a much lower volatility in terms of uh, daily movements and so on, can also have quite a significant drawdown. So that's uh, almost 50% since, since the peak in gold, which when you, if you would have invested, when, when did you invest, Brecht? If you have nested in May of 2011, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but credit to you, I really find it good that you are so open with that because every investor has highlights and lowlights and you did a good job with, with other things which you showed us. But uh, gold can, can fall, we know that, right, for now. So, but nevertheless, that's 50%, not even, 50% not even, versus 80%, so it's, it's, it's a difference, it's quite a big difference. So how, how, how can we basically sum this knowledge up to some applicable strategy? We have this bit for, bit, Bitcoin performance now, and the question is, when, when should we sell? When should we sell? It's, it's not that easy. Yeah? Even, even if you were invested in a, in a very good time, um, when you, when you, if you invested some time down there, what to do and how, how should I, should I ever sell again? Uh, I don't know, so. Okay, I skipped the page, but it doesn't matter actually. So this is what we would propose and this is actually what I ended up doing unintentionally, initially, and now I'm, 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 I'm doing this much, much more consciously. So I'm a big investor in, in, in gold and precious metals. I completely buy into the story. Uh, you don't have to convince me. Um, so I'm, I'm on board there. So this is actually one of my main positions. But uh, I also had the satellite position of, of Bitcoin. It grew. So I, what I did, I just took off, took profits and, and put it into gold and silver. But not all, not all at once, like always like, uh, at specific, specific, specified dates, right? So, the, not dates, excuse me, uh, specific, sp specified um, portfolio allocations. So, what we are looking into now, and we looked in all kind of combinations, but we find it's quite an interesting combination would be like 70% gold and 30% Bitcoin as a starting point, and then let these allocations float, fluctuate quite a bit. So, for very easy implementation, you can do 
every time Bitcoin doubles or your Bitcoin allocation doubles, it goes from 30 to 60, you sell half of it. You just cut, uh, cut your allocation and you buy gold. You buy gold with the profits. If Bitcoin falls, if Bitcoin falls in half, like from 13, uh, 30 to 15, you, you double up again. You take some of the gold and double up. And this is called rebalancing, rebalancing your portfolio. It's something very simple, it's, it's nothing new. And people and fund managers do that all the time between stocks and so on. But in reality, between stocks or between assets which correlate, the effect isn't huge because it's, 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 it's really only taking off a few percentage points here and there. But as these two assets are not correlated, have a hugely different volatility, this, this works very, very well and helps you to, to just identify um, times where actually most of the time Bitcoin obviously because it's the more volatile asset, Bitcoin is doing really well and the, dif the difficult thing is one has to do it then, you know, that it's, it's really, uh, one has to stick to a rule-based uh, approach. So. What, what, what we tested now to have this in a more like structured way, what would have happened if we did this with 30%, 60% sell every time it hit 60% and, and vice versa. And okay, so what happened, this is only the last five, three years. We, we did it for the, whole, for the whole entire time until we have data, but you, you don't see it that well, so I only put up here the last three years. You already would have sold uh, uh, beginning 2016. So, well, that wasn't the best sell, probably. But then came 2017, huge, huge bull market. You would have sold uh, in autumn 17, doubled, doubled down again, took, took profits, bought gold within. And you would have sold in pretty good, I think, in November 2017. 17, super into, into strengths. You would be completely counter cyclical with the strategy. Took the profits, bought gold again. Uh, and what happened then? Well, price, price broke down. Price broke down. And actually, it would have triggered a, a buy signal a little bit early, but pre, pre, at a pretty nice, pretty nice point in time. You would have doubled up. Since then, you wouldn't have done a lot, and now we're basically almost back to a buy signal. Almost, not yet. Uh, so this, this, this model will then just double up again, which I think personally is, is again, quite nice, quite counter-cyclically, actually <coughs> that's what you want to do as, as an investor. So this is, in a nutshell, basically the strategy would, everybody can do it by himself, but we are also planning this as a fund. So uh, nobody has to do it and nobody has to go to the trouble with like looking at when has my portfolio doubled and so on. So this is all outsourced. And it is also, I think, the probability that one really does it once by oneself is, is a little bit lower probably because uh, once you are in a bull market, you really have a difficult time selling because it's so much fun and it's doubling like uh, every every two months or three months, you just don't want to sell right now, right? So it's 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 easier said than done. So that's why these rule-based strategies, in my view, are really important to to make some kind of profits out of this high volatility. Yeah. So and the interesting thing, and that's now really interesting to me, is if we, if you go with these these uh, numbers which I just proposed. So Bitcoin, thirty percent gold 70% and let this breed between 15 and 60% the Bitcoin position. Even though you have uh, from time to time a lot of Bitcoin, the drawdown, it was higher than, than gold slightly, but, but not, not that much. So similar to gold, um, uh, much, much lower obviously than the pure Bitcoin investment. And yeah, so that's, that's a huge, huge, uh, uh, finding for me that you can really run such kind of a strategy with similar risk profile. Obviously, the returns, I won't even say what it returned because it's just, I mean, this bull market is the first part of this bull market is difficult to 
to be repeated, but I still think there's a huge uh, upside, especially now again, since we fallen down. So the profit would have been much, much, much higher than gold, which basically did nothing during the eight years. And personally, it paid my private portfolio also out. Uh, otherwise, I, I, w I would have uh, uh, traded water the last year. So yeah, I think this is really something which one should, should consider. And here are still a few, few numbers. We played around with the different allo allocations. So I mentioned this uh, strategy with 30% and 70%. One can, one can go lower, one can go higher. But what this chart shows basically is that uh, these sharp ratios, so that's a, a, a number for risk adjusted returns, basically always are higher if you do rebalancing and if you like do rebalancing with a, with a, with a higher band. Then, then these sharp ratios generally improve even better. It just proves that rebalancing works with the strategy. A few other points, a number. So again, the, the max drawdown versus return. I didn't mention the return, but here you could see it. It was like 60 something percent per annum for, for the last eight years since we, since we calculated this. Um, you really have this diversification effect uh, kicking in once you put in gold uh, with, with Bitcoin together. Whoops. So, yeah, that would have been the chart. Just, just to note, this is the gold chart doing not much down there. And this is US equities, which haven't been that bad since 2010, by the way. So you would have outperformed US equities by amazing, amazing gap. Not as good, obviously, as the pure Bitcoin investment. That just cannot be. Um, but but much, much fewer drawdowns on, during these, these ways. This is a, a log scale, note that. So this is 90% drawdown, this is 90% drawdown, this is 90% drawdown, whereas this is only like uh, uh, 30 or 40% drawdown, I'm not quite sure, but you get, you get the message. So interesting strategy, you can do it yourself, or if this is interesting, you can contact us. Um, I put up uh, a URL at the, at, at the end. Conclusion. This is, I would call it actually a conservative strategy combining gold and Bitcoin. Why conservative? Well, crypto and conservative <laughs> may be a, a, a strong, a strong um, word, but it's definitely the most conservative cryptocurrencies out there because it's the, 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 the best tested and the most robust at this time. Low correlation and low uh, volatility increases uh, the diversification effect. So that's, that's also a very good point, why this actually works so well. Um, and disciplined rebalancing can increase the risk return attributes significantly. Um, so, and this simple rebalancing strategy is actually something that can help you to, to, to buy low and sell high, as easy as this always sounds. It's really extremely difficult in practice. And yeah, this is, this is the, the URL, more infos. If you want more infos due to regular, regulatory um, reasons, I can't uh, go into depth in here, but uh, we are, um, if, if, if you uh, want to contact us in, in here, we can send you stuff. Yeah, I think I'm through. I hope I did good with the time. Yes, I tried perfect. my best yes. and uh, open Give for question. For Thanks. Any questions? So Mark, to be clear, you, the idea is that you will put up a fund doing this. Exactly. And then people can buy what a share of that fund or how does it work? Yeah, so uh, we're Liechtenstein based um, asset management company. So um, we said we have uh, five funds running um, for six to nine years or something like that. And uh, we, we set up funds which are also based in Liechtenstein. And what we are looking at is having also a physical uh, solution where we have physical gold in, in Liechtenstein as this uh, strategy is not very trading intensive. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, one can do it also with physical gold in a sensible manner, and that's that's yeah. where we want to go with this. And yes. This will not be a publicly uh, traded fund. It will be like private equity, let's say. Well, it's 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 a regulated fund, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not 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 listed on any exchange. But yeah. one will be able to buy it on a weekly basis. Okay. Next edition of Macro Trends, I will have a, an article about your fund. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, the floor is open for questions. Um, sorry, do I get you right? A simple mind like me, uh, I understand gold and silver, but I don't understand crypto, so I'm not into it because um, it's scared the hell out of me. Do I come to a guy like you to take care of that? If I want, if I'm, if I want to get into it, yeah, I'm happy to talk about it any time. Uh, so yeah, it's my the sure funds or your, whatever you're creating uh, does it mean you you take care of it? You do right. It, or do I do it? I would, uh, well, in our case, we are creating a fund, so you can invest in the fund and you don't do anything more. And the minimum amount? Yeah, the, the minimum amount will probably be at 50k uh, euros, um, but yeah, that's, that's basically... Okay. But for us, you could do half, I guess. Thank you. Uh, it's not not my let's my have, decision. Let's have a drink at the it's not my decision, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> okay. More questions. Um, two small questions. Why only bitcoins? And do you actually buy the bitcoins, or do you follow a new image? Good question. Yes, uh, very good question, thanks. Um, well, we thought about including more cryptos and I wouldn't uh, completely exclude the possibilities that we still do that. But um, actually, we're more of the opinion that in this case, keep it simple is better. I mean, Bitcoin, as you know, is, is often referred to digital gold. So digital gold and physical gold is, is quite a nice combination, but also, I think Bitcoin is really the most secure, the, 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 the cryptocurrency which is likely to survive the longest because there's so much uh, computing power behind that and it, because it has a track record of 10 years, which is quite, quite long in this area and, and hadn't, didn't have any hack or anything. So it's, it's really, it showed its robustness, whereas like other cryptocurrencies, for instance, Ethereum Classic, uh, which is still trading around, just recently had a 51% attack. So if that happens, uh, basically you're gone. You, you wiped out or the, 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 the value of this token will drop re really fast. And the probability that that happens to Bitcoin is, is really, really low. So that's the, 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 the store of value argument is basically responsible for us putting in only, crypto, uh, only Bitcoin. And the other question was, sorry, physical Bitcoin Yeah, so, so we can either ha even have it, it's called f physical, yes, so cold storage, or um, do it via future, uh, the, the Bitcoin exposure via futures, which is, I think, quite a smart option because it costs less and it still has <laughs> very, very high security um, because your exchange is the, the, the stock exchange. So the CME, for instance, uh, so that's the cheaper way to do it. Uh, thanks for your uh, uh, reading. Uh, I expected a totally different story because I sold uh, Bitcoin and gold, uh, especially from a man from Austria, from uh, von Hayek. I read a book uh, from von Hayek uh, of his paper, Denationalization of Money. So I expected that there would come a story about gold in the blockchain. <coughs> our new story, or something like uh, Jim Ricketts says that the SDR in the blockchain and gold stored at the EMF. I expected this story, but you come with this one. Have you also a uh, view on the, the two I mentioned? Uh, yes, um, I, I, we, we do. So actually both of them we touched uh, during our last report. Um, in Gold We Trust Report 2018. Um, first of all, we interviewed the nephew of uh, Friedrich von Hayek, who also is a monetary theory, uh, has a PhD in monetary theory, 
and asked him what he would have thought about Bitcoin and uh, the upcoming uh, of, of cryptocurrencies. And, uh, so he said Hayek probably would have liked the competition argument, but he thinks he wouldn't be a big Bitcoin fan. That was his opinion. But anyway, that, that what you said later on regarding um, block uh, so tokenized gold, I would call it. We we look at this a lot, and there's a lot of interesting uh, products out there. Thing is, um, it again you have a, a layer of trust again. Uh, so it, it makes this thing. It makes actually the the, the, the initial idea of elimin eliminating trust as as much as possible uh, a little bit uh, uh, difficult. Uh, so you really would have to be uh, very convinced uh, about it, the company who does a tokenized gold uh, uh, token, you know. So I think it's it's interesting, these things are coming up, um, but they are all developing and to, 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 to be able to gain such big trust that you that you really can uh, invest in, in, in tokenized gold, you really need to completely trust these people at the end of the day. So I, I think this will take time, to be honest, but the technology could be uh, enhancing the, a much broader use of gold. Uh, I, I believe that, yes. Question over there. Are there more questions on this side? Last question? Uh, yes, two small questions. Um, first, sir, how do you react on my comment that um, Bitcoin is created out of thin air? That's one. And secondly, um, I imagine that your um, system can be hacked. Um, what will happen to my investment eventually? And is there a kind of an insurance? Yeah, okay. Well, um, point one, yes, Bitcoin is uh, actually only, if you want, uh, a, a, a ledger, a database. Um, but it is uh, the first time which where one can really transfer data from from one point to to another basically so that's the revolutionary part so the internet has been here around for 30 years or something but only since 10 years there has been some kind of a technology where we not only can send the email which in reality is copied we don't send anything we just make copies of everything um, but somebody found out how to uniquely have one data here and not there, and it's not being able to double spend. So it's true, I, I, I find this an interesting discussion. Does it have to be, has, have to have some kind of a commodity backing or is, is there really the case for a digital asset? You know? I see both sides, honestly speaking, um, but as we are going more and more into a digitalized era, I, I think the case for some kind of uh, digital assets are strong. And number two, yes, um, this is a very important point, securing digital assets in a fund vehicle, for instance. Uh, in that case, it's very important that when, if one invests into, into crypto funds, that they are regulated, in my view. Why is that? The regulation, European regulation, demands that uh, you have a, a specialized uh, cust uh, cust custodian, custody bank, which is liable to, 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 to for safe custody. So uh, it's not part of the bank, it's out of their uh, balance sheet and so on, but they have to make sure that, this, uh, the, the, that these assets are uh, stored securely and if they cannot, if they, if they have a problem, they, have to, they will have to um, pay, you know? So they have good insurance and they have all kind of uh, precautions that this doesn't happen. Okay. Um, I can <laughs> put it on. Can you hear me right now? No. Hello. Okay. Yeah. That was good. Um, we have one last question. Uh, we're a bit over time. We will have this question, and normally we should be back here at four, but let's make that four fifteen. So okay. I think during the day we have been very, very good with timing.